All right, now wait a second, wait a second. Before you click that thumbs down button because you saw a 500 amp meter and a 7,000 amp load tester, let me explain. It's what makes this a carbon pile load tester is the carbon pile. This is really the unique part here. The meter just happens to be what I could find cheaply and quickly to make this thing in time, besides which I'm only really interested in testing up to about 350, 400 amps. So what makes this thing 7,000 amps? And how did I get to that number? Well, that's actually kind of a sort of funny story. Well, not funny, but kind of sad story. Actually, I went to Harbor Freight and I bought their 500 amp carbon pile load tester. Uh, in fact, I bought three of them because, well, that's a whole nother story. But anyway, I brought them back. Two were dead out of the box and one uh, did work. The, one of them was fairly easy to fix. The other one, not so much. But what I discovered in those is for 500 amps, they only had seven cubic inches of graphite or the carbon pile was only seven cubic inches. We have about 100 here, maybe even just a little bit over. So seven versus 100, you can do the math, 7,000 amps. To actually make this thing measure 7,000 amps, you'd obviously need a 7,000 amp shunt and a 7,000 amp meter. You probably have to heavy up the cables, but this, this part, well, by Harbor Freight standards anyway, it should live. So what good is this thing and why did I make it? I'm using it to measure voltage drop on our battery packs for the electric turbo project. If you haven't seen that, I'm going to put a link up in that corner so you can check it out. I think it's a pretty cool project. But we're learning very quickly that voltage drop is our biggest issue. So towards that end, we're building a much heavier duty battery pack out of those Lishan LTO cells. And I wanted to show you how nicely this, this works, this whole setup works. Those cells are kind of half charged right now, which is why four of them are reading at 9.76 volts. But this thing works really, really well. Watch how smoothly, let's just crank it up to 350. There you go, it's 350. And voltage is, you know, dropping a little bit. But there you go, beautiful. So how does it work? How did I make this thing? Well, a carbon pile load tester is really just a bunch of graphite disks or carbon disks that get compressed between two terminals and the resistance then drops. So as I mentioned, the seven cubic inch, the tiny little two and a half inch by, what was it, I think an eighth inch thick carbon disks that were in the uh, Harbor Freight units. These are four inches in diameter. Pretty good size, pretty thick too, you know, quarter inch. So there's a whole bunch of these. There's over 30 in this particular tester. These are a few extras that I have left over. And by the way, if you're interested in buying these, there is a seller on eBay I got them from. He's actually really awesome. I normally wouldn't do that and I get nothing out of it, but he really knew his stuff and he was really helpful. So if he still has some, the link is down in the description below. Anyway, so I leveraged the cheap and easy, you know, 3D printer parts that are available now everywhere. Uh, instead of trying to make this frame, you know, from steel and welding it all together. And it's, it's who's got that kind of time? So that's what the, the frame is made out of. And even the center is a 3D printed lead screw or printer lead screw. Um, and that's what this whole thing rides on down below. This is, I mean, we just tested that thing. And this is barely above room temperature. Same with the top plate. Anyway, so the lead screw rides on a couple of ball bearings and that raises the lead nut up. There is a Teflon button. On that Teflon button, there is a, what's called a die spring. Uh, and that pushes against the plate and the plate obviously has electrical contact. The lead screw itself is insulated with three layers of uh, high temperature fiberglass sleeving so the stack doesn't short out on it. And that's basically how it works. So we saw what, like maybe a volt drop on our test with the lichen cells. Let's see how a car battery works. Oh, by the way, here's another thing that I learned about this in this process, is you need to measure voltage at the batteries. Don't even try to measure voltage somewhere here because these connections are gonna be crappy, high resistance, whatever. It doesn't really matter as long as it puts the correct load in amps on what you're trying to test. So measure the voltage at the batteries because you'll see a lot more voltage drop. So again, with the lichen cells, we saw what? About a volt-ish drop maybe, maybe a little bit more. Let's hook up the lead acid car battery and see what kind of results we get there. I'll be right back. All right, so here we have what is more or less a recently charged car battery hooked up to the same thing. It took a little bit to get the voltage uh, terminals connected or making contact with the battery terminals themselves as opposed to the clamps. 
But let's do a comparison test. Let's pull the same 350 amps out of this. And then, you know, I have a feeling they're not going to be close. So the difference between 9 point something volts and uh, I think it was 9.7 ish and 12 and a half volts is going to kind of be insignificant. But let's go ahead and test it. Let's see what we get. All right, we're down to nine volts, just over nine volts. So significantly different, but this thing works beautifully. So where did it all go wrong, you ask? Well, it all went wrong when I tried to test the full 35 volt packs of which there are two wired in series for 70 volts for the electric turbo project. That takes a lot of power and those packs have a lot of power. And the one thing I didn't even remotely think of is that arc welding, stick welding voltage is like right around 35 volts uh, under load in particular. In fact, that give you one strong arc. And so the first time I tried it, you know, I got a wicked plasma arc. And because I'm really, really smart, I kept doing it again and again and again and again. But that ultimately gave me an idea, which <laughs> so, so that's kind of the fail part. Yeah, so it didn't work exactly how I wanted it to. I can still extrapolate from making up these little packs of lichen cells and get a pretty good estimate of where we're going to be. It's looking like we're going to be around 63 volts, which should be a good 11 volts more than we were seeing before, which should mean more power. But I digress. So that gave me, the plasma arc thing gave me a really, really good idea of something else I can try. But I'm going to save that for the next video. So don't forget to ring the bell, subscribe. There's a lot more fun, weird, science-y, nerdy, fast car drag racing stuff coming up. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun and enjoy the deer that was in my backyard earlier. And I'll catch you on the next one.